When so many people are hungry and dying, where do you start? We know there's enough to go round. But still, so much poverty. Where do you start? You start here. Leaders from 189 countries have signed up to end poverty. Make them keep their promise, now. We have a plan, the Millennium Development Goals. We have the money and the means. What we want is action. Just a few days before she died, she had said that I should take care of the children. My children, she said, educate them, guide them. This is what she told me. It was 2 a.m. in a Bangladeshi slum when Majunda Begum went into labor with her fourth child. When my wife died, I wasn't at home. I only came home half an hour after her death. My eldest son asked me, Dad, won't you take mom to the hospital? And I answered, son, we don't have the money for a hospital. Ah, a mother is a mother. She's the most important person in a child's life. The most important. After their mother's death, Majunda's children gave up going to school. Her daughter became a housemaid. Her son collects scrap. With no education, their best chance of escaping poverty died with their mother. Sadly, Majunda's death is typical. Around the world, 14,000 women and girls die every day in pregnancy and giving birth. Most of them, 99%, live in developing countries. Healthcare and education will keep them alive. If our mothers died at birth, what would have our lives been? A nation cannot progress with mothers dying in large numbers. Many women die because they don't get the right medical care, because it's too far away or expensive, or because of cultural pressures. How many women die from pregnancy or childbirth is a useful measure of how a country is developing. To keep more women alive, the Bangladeshi government has made a big investment in educating girls. They have trained more birth attendants and started clinics for pre- and postnatal care. And it has worked. Between 1991 and 2004, they have halved the number of women dying in childbirth. An educated woman will know what to do during pregnancy and post-pregnancy to protect herself and the baby. Empowering women to ensure that they have a say over what happens to their bodies will ensure that they plan their families properly, they don't get married before their bodies are ready for marriage, and they are not sexually violated. Sewarag is Ethiopian. She was married and became pregnant far too young. Physically, she was badly damaged. She is just one of 50 million women suffering from pregnancy and birth-related illness. <laughs> I hate my life, but when I see the others, I'm grateful, as I'm not as ill as them. Sewarag was rejected by her husband and her community. Do you think it's possible you're going to go back to your husband? No, I don't want to. I don't want to. In North America, the chances of dying in childbirth are one in every 3,700. In Sub-Saharan Africa, it's one in 16. The interventions that are required to save these women's lives are available, and they are known to the global health community. They are easy to implement, and they can become a pivotal part of any health system, no matter how poor the country. It is a question of priorities. Goal five. Reducing Maternal Mortality. The Millennium Development Goals. Make our leaders keep their promises. Eight goals. One world. No excuses.